Hi there, everybody. Welcome to GenVFX. My name is Gary, and this is another one of our modifier little tutorial things. Today, I'm going to talk about a modifier which, on its own right, doesn't necessarily have a lot of power. I mean, it does it does some quite brilliant stuff, but it's it's probably one of those modifiers that you think, well, what can I use this for? What can I use this for? Um, but in fact, it actually has, you know, it's quite a powerful thing when used in conjunction with others. Uh, but because, I'm, because I, was, I don't really want to keep on doing too many of these where you see other things at the same time, I'm just going to show you what a, a useful thing that you can do with, with the build modifier. I'll explain it all about it first. It's going to go into this box and I'm just going to stick it basically onto wireframe. In fact, no, I won't stick it on wireframe. What I'll do is I'll just put wireframe over the top of the box. So let's go back to here and turn on the wireframe. If I add the build modifier to this, immediately it vanishes because we're at frame one and we have a, the build modifier is basically starts at one and finishes at 100. It actually finishes at 101. We'll come back to that in a second. What it does is over the course of time, it builds the polygons that are on your screen or the elements of your object which are on screen because it could be like edges or vertices or whatever it builds them back in their id order so it comes up to a frame 100 and in theory even though it says it ends at 100 it doesn't it ends at 101 so if i go forward one teensy 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 little frame there it is 101 now you know you can randomize it so it kind of draws them in in out of any distinct order it doesn't necessarily help uh, a great deal on its own right, at least you wouldn't really think so. Obviously, it's better when you have an object with more polygons. So let's just add, um, add a new mesh. Let's add an icosphere and let's bump up the iterations on that. And let's add the build modifier and a for 115. Let's just set that to 150 for the sake of argument. Now, if I press play now, you'll see it build itself up you see you can and you can see how it's working based on the polygon id which is you know it's it it's it's kind of nice you know it has its uses but what you can do is you can actually randomize it so it can run and build something over a period of time and then once it reaches that point then it's done so the great thing is obviously you can say right we'll start at say 25 and end at 50 so what'll happen is it'll, nothing will happen until 25 and then it will build up but it does make you wonder what it's actually any good for um, on its own right. Because what you'd, what, what you, when you look at something like this, you think, well, you know, I, I wouldn't mind actually you know, adding a solidify, giving these a, bit of, a little bit of depth. That would be quite nice. And then maybe if I, um, well, if I add a smooth surface modifier to that as well, subdivision surface, you know, then I'd get this one really quite funky shapes going on. But then, of course, you're still sort of like constrained to this, I'm going to grow one over a certain number of frames. It could be quite useful if you had, uh, you know, a character that was animating, maybe. Um, so they just appear over a period of time by a certain number of frames. Or you could, you know, and actually, in all honesty, if you had something like Decimate thrown into the mix as well. So if we added Decimate in there, let's it collapses, but let's move this between the build and the subdivide. In fact, no, let's put it under the build. There you go. So we have this sort of like kind of a and a kind of a retro kind of feel. I mean, we, let's just change the build, by the way. So let's go back to 1 and to 75. And then if I go back to the beginning here and I set the decimate uh, there, so just a keyframe there, and then at 75, let's set that back to 1 and add another keyframe there. So when we play through that, it kind of has a... It, it, it kind of has a, a, a sort of a, a old sort of... I don't want to say the word Tron because I'm not thinking that. I'm thinking more in terms of, uh, say, some... Well, I suppose very early computer gamey kind of effects that you might find in a film. I still don't want to say the word Tron. I've just said the word Tron. But you know what I mean. So it's not really working on its own. Now the point about, as I say, the build is it can draw things on in a random manner or it can draw things on in relation to the number of your polygon IDs or vertex IDs or line IDs. So it's just whatever is there, it will rebuild it. So that brings me on to uh, some way of actually finding a good use for this. It's not the only way of doing this, but it's, uh, it just happens to be one thing that you can do with this. I'm just going to go to the top view. And I'm going to go and add, I'm going to add 
a curve. I'm going to add a NURBS curve because I like the, the control of this. And I'm going to go to edit mode and you can see there's a bunch of vertices. There are four vertices, but the curve is just there. Um, so let's just, the curve direction is going from left to right. Now I'm just going to basically just go and scale this, all of these vertices minus one of the X. So S X minus one. So the curve is now going in that direction. I could have, you can use switch, if you can, you can right click and go switch direction. Uh, that was a lot quicker. Uh, actually, let's switch direction and put it back that way. Let's do it again. There you go. So I've got my points going like this. Now what I'm going to do, is going to move these up here. And I'm going to very quickly write my name. Uh, in fact, no, I won't write my name. I will write, uh, what can I write? Something, something brilliant. I can't think of anything brilliant. I'm just going to write my name. So I'm, I'm going to press E to extrude and E to extrude and E to extrude and E to extrude. Yes, my name is Gary. Remember I said at the beginning. And I'm just going to create a capital G. Big swoopy tail. Because that's how I do my Gs. I'm going to go up and I'm going to go to here. And I'm going to come back. You know the drill. It's just making a curve, but I'm drawing it in the way that I would actually write my name. Thank oh, God, you know, I've never been happier that my name isn't Christopher. <laughs> this would take forever. Uh, and then I'm going to go down here, and then here, and here, and here, and here, or, or Jonathan. Jonathan. Mind you, I'd probably just put John then, wouldn't I? I mean, I always did want my name to be something like Garfield. In fact, I, <laughs> to tell you a little secret, when I was uh, in my teens, I, for some reason, wanted to be called Garth Pembleton. I don't know why. I don't know anyone called Garth Pembleton. If there is someone out there called Garth Pembleton, I wanted to be you. Uh, that's not a joke. That's the absolute truth. I'm an embarrassment to my race. Please forgive me. So <laughs> I've just written my name and it's, it's not terrible. That A is a bit broad. Let's just bring that down there and let's go to object mode. And there you can see it's actually, once you get, that's the thing, once you come out of the CV mode, and you can actually see what the curves do. It doesn't look too bad, does it? It's not too bad. Now, the great thing about this, of course, is because it's a curve, if I go in here and go to geometry, I can add some depth to this, make it a little bit wider. And just to be a pedant about this, let's also add some extra thickness to it. I want to add a bezier like this and I'm going to go back to my nerves curve I'm going to set the bezier curve to be the taper height and you can see it's what it's done is it doesn't matter what I've done here I'm just going to put that to point 0.1 oh come on put it to point 0.2 let's put it to point 0.2 yeah um, it's saying that this first point this first point here that is the height of my curve here and then as we go further along it will get thinner and thinner and thinner because of the way it works. So I'm just going to let go up. So if I push that up, you can see it thickens that bit there. It's quite nice, actually. Um, and then if I do this and select that point there, I can make it so it's fat all the way through and then skinny at the end. What we're going to do is just select these two points very quickly. And I'm going to go segments, I'm going to subdivide and subdivide again. So we've got a few more points. And I'm going to take this, I'm going to bring this over here. Let's take this and bring this there so we get like a slightly rounded end. Do this same with this one here, bring this here. Take that point and bring that so that we get a slightly rounded end again. It's just a little bit too, there we go, it's a little bit of a point. And let's just bring this down a bit in the middle, just so we get a little bit extra weight. So there's like a big thickness here and let's come back down and around. Okay, there you go. Nice. So I'm gonna now add the build modifier and straight away we lose most of our letter. But remember, this is actually creating a 3D shape based on our curves build. So as we play it back, there you go, from one to 100, it's writing out my name. Now, it doesn't have to be my name, it could be anybody's name. It's a constant speed. There isn't a way to slow that down. At least if there is, I don't know what to do. Um, of course, you could make it 
look retro again by changing it to randomized. I kind of get it to magically draw in. You can see it actually does it with all the individual faces as well. So it's quite pretty. And again, if you had some interesting camera angles, you could make it look quite funky. But really and truly what I'm talking about here is writing on my name or writing on your name or writing on anything or even, you know, building pipes. Again, it's, you know, something that's really quite useful for live creation. But because you have fixed the polygon IDs, you have decided where those polygons are rather than arbitrary making something out of a cube or a box or whatever or a sphere. You have the ability to drive the build the way you want it to go. So actually, it's actually a little bit more useful than people give it credit for. Anyway, and that's me, Gary, signing off now. All done, all gone. Um, just wanted to say Happy New Year to you all, if you're listening to this at the beginning of 2021, which is when I've done it. So this is Gary signing off. Please, please, please subscribe. Please leave a comment. Um, please get in contact if you want to have me do anything. I mean, at the moment, I... I will actually very quickly show you something that I'm working on the minute. And that is open recent. It's a satellite. So now you can see I've just been viewing all the all the faces and everything. But this is actually using a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about. Um, um, not the build so much, but uh, mirror. Uh, so you can see that there's only one object there. There's an array or modifier on that. So if I turn that off. And there you go. Basically, that object is purely that one. Let's just uh, pull that out of that. So I've got one object which I've built, which is this bit here. And then the array modifier, which we talked about, spits it all the way over there. And then we have a mirror modifier, which basically mirrors it across using the initial object cube, which I've got in there underneath all of that, to actually um, act as the mirror object the mirror point um, a lot of this stuff uh, there's some fantastic modeling tools which you can use which basically if you go uh, all over this software there's wonderful things um, there's another good use of an array there's lots of extrusions um, those are pipes again those are done by uh, manipulating curves and then building them off of the curve they're still not been baked out as polygons they will probably have to be baked out as polygons because uh, this is not going to be animated inside of blender but you know you can do so much and most of that took me about uh, an hour um no it's 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 good good fun and obviously that was used using that was done using um the sculpt brush which is the cloth one ah, it's just such such a beautiful piece of software right i'm gonna let you go now um and as i say i will speak to you again very shortly take care look after yourselves and see you in the next one